Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 8744. So today, guys, we're going to be doing my AFCON round of 16 predictions, guys. We had in a very eventful group stage. Some big nations got grouped. Some underdogs advanced. Which of the underdogs are going to prevail? Are we going to see any upsets in round of 16? Let me know you guys' thoughts in the comments below. Please remember to hit that like button, guys. Hit that subscribe button, guys. And like I said, guys, I'm covering the AFCON on a daily basis for you guys. So it really does mean a lot when you guys hit that subscribe button and hit that like button, guys. Anyways, we're going to start with the first game here we got here. It is Angola versus Namibia. Wow. This, in my opinion, is one of the, is the underdog matchup. Because both these sides defensively have shown their st strengths. I think the, the key for this one, though, is that whichever team is attacked is better. Because for me, I think what Angola, Angola have done, I think Angola for me have been more impressive than Namibia. You know? Angola, for me, they were in a very difficult group. They had Algeria and Burkina Faso. And Namibia, with, I mean, they had South Africa and Mali, Tunisia. It's not the same degree of difficulty, you know. And I just feel like for me, Angola, for me, have proven it more and shown it more. And I feel like for Namibia, this is an uncharted territory because I believe this is the first time they ever made the knockout stage in their history. So this is a very unfamiliar territory for them. So I think I'm going to go with Angola, though, to win this. And I'm going to say they're going to win this 1-0. I think it'll be a close game, tight game. This could even go to penalties, but I think Angola just have the edge in the final third. Next up is Nigeria versus Cameroon. Wow. This is a very big matchup. This is probably the best matchup you could have in the round of 16 because both these nations despise each other, and both these nations contrast each other. Nigeria are defensively solid. They are good. Um, they're struggling to score goals. Cameroon defensively is horrendous. Um, they could score a good amount of goals, so, and I think the difference is that Cameroon have, um, as well as the fact that um, Cameroon are very one-dimensional by the sense that they only know how to cross the ball, whereas Nigeria have a hard time even scoring a goal in the beginning. It's a very tricky matchup, and this is how I'm going to paint it out to you guys. I think Nigeria is going to take the early lead in this game, and they're going to be all cruise control, and um, it's going to be a good game. And then Cameroon all of a sudden score a late goal out of a set piece out of nowhere. And then I think in extra time, they're going to score the second goal to send Nigeria pack. Yes, guys, I actually have Cameroon to advance, guys, 2-1 over Nigeria. I just feel like, for me, we're going to see some craziness. And I just feel like, for me, this is the game that I could see some shock here. And the sense of, yeah, so I'm going to go Cameroon to win 2-1. Next up, it is Equatorial Guinea versus Guinea. It's a Guinea Derby, man. It's the Guinea Derby, guys. This is a big one. Um, I'm really interested to see how these players perform. Like, you know, Extra Guinea, we all know what they did in the group stages were fantastic. They destroyed Ivory Coast. Um, they also destroyed Guinea-Bissau. And they also got a draw against Nigeria. Guinea, on the other hand, they put up a great display against Cameroon. Um, got a draw there. And put up a good, resilient fight against Senegal. And obviously beat Gambia. So, it's a tricky one to call. But I'm going to go with Guinea to pull this off. I think Guinea's going to pull this off because of Gourassi. I think Gourassi... He's going to finally be at his best, and I feel like he's going to come clutch. I just don't know why, but I have a feeling he's going to come clutch. I have this game to go to extra time, and I think Gurasi will score before. I think he will score like in the 110th minute, something like that, to break Ekotro Guinea hearts. And I just feel like for me, Ekotro Guinea, as good as they have been, I feel like for me, this team is very reliant. And this team really needs a lot of pace to do their thing. And I feel like this Guinea team won't allow Ekotro Guinea so much space. I feel like this team does a lot of good pressing as a midfield, as a unit, and I feel like Extra Guinea is going to struggle out, you know, and I just feel like Guinea is going to get the job done, so I'm going to go with 1-0 win for Guinea, always look out for Nui, the top scorer of the AFCON right now, shout out to him with five goals. Next up is Egypt versus DR Congo, this is a big one, big, big matchup, and I want to see how Egypt can do without Mohamed Salah, of course, Mohamed Salah will probably not be available for this game, and it's going to be interesting to see how Egypt do, because we have seen them in the group stage, they did a decent job. But the issue is that Egypt just couldn't hold on to leads. You know, they re relented the lead from their winning positions. You know, against, um, what was it called, Mozambique. They were 1-0 up, made it, they made it 2-1. Mozambique made it 2-1, and they salvaged it all. Then against Cape Verde, Egypt were 2-1 up, and conceded a late goal. You see where I'm coming at, right? Where Egypt keeps giving up leads from winning positions. DR Congo, on the other hand, just have a hard time scoring goals. They've only scored two goals out of the 10 shots they've had on target, probably. Bakambu needs to not start. Bakambu can't start. Wisa has to come clutch. 
For Egypt, man, defensively look very sketchy. I have not been impressed with Egypt defensively, but I do think Egypt's going to get the job done. And I think this will end in 90 minutes. I think Egypt will score two late goals, and then Dior Congo will pull one back, and then Egypt will just about hang on to make it to the quarterfinals. I think it's going to end 2-1 to Egypt. Next, it is Cape Verde versus Martinia. Cape Verde, man, what an achievement for them. This is fantastic. To top the group with two AFCON champions is incredible. Egypt and Ghana, respectively. As well as the fact that this team looks amazing. I mean, look at how they beat, um, what is it called, Mozambique. They did such a big statement. You know, Bebe scored that amazing goal. Uh, Montia, Montero scored that nice goal there. And this Cape Verde team is so underrated. Mauritania, shout out to them. They got the first ever win the AFCON against Algeria, against the defending AFCON, well, not defending, but against the Algeria, a two-time AFCON champs that were the def- that won the this in 2019, and they were fantastic. And I I was so happy that they got the result because for me, Martinia were amazing group stage. They played so well against Brickham Villas. got hard done by a by late penalty, put up a really good showing against a goal, scored two amazing goals, and you know, it was it was it was it was somewhat justice for them to be in the round of sixteen. That being said, I don't think justice will happen here. I think Cape Verde is just going to routinely win this one. I think this could even be very once. This could even be one-sided. I'm going to go with Cape Verde to win this 3-1. I just feel like for me, Martinia just don't have enough experience in this kind of situation. I think Cape Verde do. And I think Cape Verde have been in this position before, whereas Martini haven't. So I think Cape Verde is going to get the job done. And I'm going to say they win this 3-1. Next up, it is Senegal versus Ivory Coast. Senegal, man. For me, the best team in Africa right now just by current form. Like, look at how well they did in the group stage. Although, that being said, they even though they topped the group comfortably, I still feel like the Senegal team weren't challenged. And they're the only team that only, they got nine points. As for Ivory Coast, this is their chance to get redemption. After being saved by Morocco, can they, can they do this? I want to see how this Ivory Coast team reacts after that humiliating loss at home to actually Guinea. And I want to see who's going to be the coach now. Is it going to be Didier Drogba? That's going to be interesting. And I want to see how those players perform because we know Ivory Coast is a good team. And I think on the day the Equatorial Guinea game was just an anomaly. It was just one of those really bad games, you know? For this one, guys, I'm going to go with the Shark. I think Ivory Coast is going to knock Senegal out. I just feel like for me, Senegal haven't really been challenged. And I just feel like Ivory Coast, with all adversity, with all the challenges, and I just feel like with so much pressure, they're going to finally perform here and beat the AFCON defending champions, which will be a big statement in the round of 16. You know, many of us probably didn't even think Senegal would go out this early, but I think there's going to be one big upset. In the AFCON round of 16, there's going to be one big team that's going to go out, and I think it's going to be Senegal. I'm putting my mo- name on the line here, guys. Next up, it is Mali versus Burkina Faso. Mali, man, I've been impressed. I've been impressed with Mali. That being said, I still feel like this Mali team I still kind of expected more in the final third. As good as they were, they cannot score enough goals. Burkina Faso, we know how clinical this team is. This team is lethal. You give them any sniff opportunity, they're going to score. If they, even, if, even if they have like four shots, three on target, they're going to score one goal. I would probably guarantee you that. You know, And I just think that for me, this will be a big challenge for Mali. I think Burkina Faso are just more clinical in the final third. I think the likes of Bertrand Traore, um, Kabore, is going to come clutch. And I just feel like for me, as good as Mali's midfield is, that's where their biggest strength is. I just don't think their attack is good enough. So I think Mali's going to lose this. I think Burkina Faso is going to win this 2-0. Mali will probably be the better team for like 95, 85% of the game. But Burkina Faso with that 10, 15% domination are going to be clinical. They're going to make their chances count. That's what Burkina Faso do, man. And fun fact for you guys, whenever Burkina Faso makes an awkward stage, the worst is the semifinals. So Burkina Faso can get very far in this tournament. Just putting this out here. And then finally, the last match we got here is Morocco, South Africa. Morocco, man. For me, I would say the second best team in the group stage of the AFCON. They topped the group at seven points and very, very impressive. That being said, though, um, their goal scoring is a bit of a problem. They only scored five goals, which may seem great on paper, but let me give you some context. Three of the goals came against Tanzania. Two of which came after Tanzania went down to 10 men. You see where I'm coming at, right? If you really deep it, it's only really three goals in the spam of um, three games, right? If you're not including the red card thing. So for Morocco, we know how good they are defensively. It's just their attack is abysmal. I'm sorry. And Naziri needs to step up. Ziyech needs to step up. These kind of players. Buffal needs to step up. 
As for South Africa, this is a very inconsistent team. This is a team that could do so well, you know, knock out one of the tournament favorites like they did four or five years ago in 2019 against Egypt at the host nation. But then they also could do something that they may not even qualify for the AFCON. So you never know with the South Africa team. They're a very unpredictable team. Sometimes it can play very well. Sometimes it can play crap. Who knows with this team? And could I see South Africa eliminate Morocco? Potentially. Because remember, South Africa did play against Morocco in the AFCON qualifiers before the tournament. But remember, we got to keep in mind, Morocco had already qualified and, you know, it was a South Africa stadium and, you know, they use their B team. But there is a possibility, guys. There is a possibility. I'm just putting this out here. But I do think Morocco is going to win this. I just feel like for me, South Africa, for me, I just don't have enough quality, to be honest with you. And I just feel like Morocco have too much. I think Morocco is going to win this. Two goals to nail to seal their spot into the next round. So there you guys have it, man. Those are my um, round of 16 predictions. This is a recap of the predictions I have. So I went with some upsets. I went with some favorites. And these are the quarterfinal matches we can get if all of the predictions I got correct. So we could have some very intriguing quarterfinals, man. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.